Yeah, got back from the Windbreaker store. Hmm, let's listen to Winds of Plague's new album. Hey, yo, how do you do? Um, this is gonna be this, and uh, I don't know what else it'd be. It's not that, it's this. So this is this. What did you think of it? Fuck. No. What did you think of it, Keith? Yeah, Keith. Goes. Shit. So I got. <laughs> so, uh, Went to Plague randomly put out a new album. They kind of disappeared for a while, and then said, hey, this album comes out this day. October 29th, I think this came out, and, uh, yeah. Oh, it came We're out here to birthday. discuss it. I feel blessed. It came out on my birthday. Yeah. The, the, aren't you happy? Such no. a great album came out on your birthday. No. And so, th yeah, this is the follow-up to Against the World. It came out in 2011, I think. That album was balls, too. But this album's fantastic, and we're here to discuss why it's fantastic. So, Sam, why is this album fantastic? Um, it had its moments, I think. Uh, the one song was One Foot in the Grave, I think. One you know? Foot Up Your Ass. Yeah, it was, what, one, foot, I, was one Foot in the Grave. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a track five, five, I think. It had its moments that, you know, individually looking at them, you know, separate from the album itself, they weren't bad. This al this album had some moments that, you know, on their own were okay. You know, they weren't the worst thing in the world. But now, when you put everything together in this album, and you have a lot of repetition of, I guess, sort of the same style of things. You have the uh, the breakdowns. You have the uh, two-step parts, which they overuse so freaking much. Um, I mean, yeah, you, what else would you expect from Winds of Plague? But a lot of two-stepping. Um, uh, and then they have these, like, symphonic parts. And I guess other stuff, which is, like, riffs and blast beats and stuff, which makes up, like, less than 1% of the album. Most of it is breakdowns, and they get annoying. And, uh, <laughs> even the two-stepping gets kind of annoying. Like, two-step riffs are cool on their own. Like, I don't mind them at all. You know, but when you use them that much, it's just kind of, you know... I, I think before this, uh, we, we listened to this, you were like, I bet there's a two-step part in yeah. this song. And, and there, there is. is. <laughs> and, uh, throughout the album, up until, uh, I guess track 10, there, there's a second part of track 10, which is kind of its own track with, uh, cr I'll get to that in a minute. But um, the, up to the end of track 10, I'm like, it, it's what I expected, kind of. I can't really say, you know, it's worse than I expected or whatever, or it's better than I expected. It's exactly what I expected, for the most part. It's If you enjoy Winds of Plague, you'll like it, but, you know, I guess I've gone on to, you know, from when I was in, or like, what was it, like three, four years ago, you know, when I sort of first started listening to this band, uh, you move on to bigger and better things, I would say. But, um, this band, 
I don't know. I'm I'm really just not into them anymore. And uh, the music itself, I would say they've. I don't I don't know. It's like they run out of things to write or something. So they just go with constant two stepping and breakdowns, and it just doesn't inter interest me. Interest interest whatever. Um, it, it it's just whatever. I'm trying to find good things to say about this, but a lot of it's just boring to me and. You know, we were just sitting there and just, like, pointing out breakdowns. Like, up next, up next, up next, and two-step parts. And nine times out of ten, we were right. And it, I don't know. A lot, some of the things on their own were okay, but you know, the album as a whole just kind of sucked the big one for me. But I was like, all right, I'll try to give it some credit up until the track 11, you could say when it has Chris Freinzak from Attila and Winds of Plague sort of sounds like Attila, the riffing that they're using is like Attila, the breakdowns that they're using is like Attila, and I, I just kind of, uh, that was the part where I officially all out sort of gave up on this, and I just thought it was, if you like both his bands, whatever, I mean, don't listen to what I'm saying, but I, I don't like both of those bands, and I just kind of thought it was crap, but it's kind of like a you know, a uh, compilation of Attila and Winds of Plague, but, uh, yeah, I, I just didn't really care for this album. It didn't inter interest me as much as it would have maybe, like, four years ago when I first started really listening to the heavier metal and stuff, but, you know, now I like a lot of other things, and this just, you know, I kind of see it as nothing special. Yeah, um, I'm not... You already went. I did. Oh, I said it was shit, but... Oh, you go again. I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna elaborate a little bit, too. I mean, I'm I'm not the biggest Deathcore fan. Um, I never really got into Winds of Plague, but I figured I'd sit here and listen to this, and everything Sam said is basically true. I don't... I wasn't feeling it a lot of the time. I just would lose track, and so, like... A lot of the songs went really quick. One, because they were, but then also I just wasn't, you know, feeling it. And, you know, you know, a couple times, you know, I'd sit there and I'd be like, break down, give it like ten seconds, and then it would fucking happen. <laughs> and, like, yeah, there were some parts that, I, that were okay, but then it's, it, like, you know, a couple, a, a two-step part or two and a breakdown or two, but then there's so many of them. That even sitting here right now, we literally just got done listening to the album. I can barely remember them just because there was so many of all of that. And um, some of them are just kind of like, I don't know. The one breakdown, it was toward the end of the album. It was really, I don't know, stupid sounding. And then there was when he screams, what the fuck, in the last song. I, I lost it there. Like I, I'm like, this is the kind of, this is what you have to write to get the song out. I'm like, God, so... I just, yeah. I didn't like it. This album, to me, is, you know, just one giant smelly pile of shit. Uh, I, I, I'm, I can't even give this any credit because there's not even anything on here that, you know, is even the slightest bit original or... It, it's stuff that has been done by about every fucking... You know, metalcore, deathcore band. And it's has, already been done by this band. On every yeah, album. even this the, the, this band. I mean, it's just it's been done better, or it's just I, I just I don't even know how this band is. I mean, they've kind of become irrelevant, but I don't even know how they're going to even try to stay relevant and with writing stuff like this. You know, you look at deathcore bands from two thousand seven and eight or whatever, and the bands that are still around, still, you know, sell out shows and all that stuff, have moved on to bigger and better things. This band has not. They've actually retracted. Um, I used to really be into this band. Their first, uh, uh, Decimate the Week and the Great Stone War, uh, were are, are actually cool, and they're still somewhat listenable. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I've moved on to uh, different f styles of music and stuff, but, I mean, it's okay. But with their last album, Against the World, and even more with this album, excuse me, they've completely moved away from what they made them, you know, actually kind of cool. Um, 
you know, they, they had some pretty cool guitar solos. Those are fucking non-existent anymore. And even if they are, the, the horrible production on this album just pushes it to the background to where it's almost like ambience. And, and it's just, it doesn't even stand out. Um, there's, I think there's about three of them on here that I really noticed. And you can, you can barely notice what the hell's going on because they're so drowned out. The production is just so god awful on here. I, I would love to know a lot of the lyrics that, you know, Johnny Plague said because it's like he just slurs them all together. It, it, it just, they are so, uh, you, you just can't understand what the fuck he's saying because the production is just so bad. It's, the drums are way too loud, the guitars are way too quiet. And the vocals just mesh so badly with every with like mostly the guitars that you just don't know what the fuck is happening. And at, at times, you know, more the latter half of the album, it was like he was trying to sound like Jamie Josta of Hatebreed. I mean, it sounded exactly like him. Um, and it was just kind of like, what the fuck? I mean, they completely have lost all of their originality. Um, and just just an overabundance of breakdowns. I mean, and, you know, two, the two-step, you know, upbeat parts where you can get your fucking hardcore dancing on. It's just like every fucking song was structured the same. It, it, they had, you know, multiple parts, you know. Like, like, we were literally, like they said, we were literally sitting here going, I bet you a breakdown's coming next, and it would happen, or I bet a two-step part is next, and it would happen, it's, it's, like, if you want an album that is predictable, this is the definition of a predictable album, I mean, this doesn't even surprise you in any way, and it's just blends together so badly, it's just a god-awful album that is boring, and I just, I can't even give it any credit, even if you have Vincent Bennett on one of the songs, I mean, yeah, Vincent Bennon is awesome, but he can't save a terrible song. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Like, Sewer Mouth ends so abruptly with a really shitty generic breakdown. You know, these slow, you know, mid-paced breakdowns. It's like, dun, 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 dun. It's like, it's been done 50,000 fucking times, even by this band. It's, it is really, really bad. And... Also, when there are breakdowns, they are so paper thin with the sound. It's just, there is nothing to this production at all. Like, there is no balls. It doesn't come in and smack your dick in your ass or something. It's just, there is nothing to it. And then you end with a song with, uh, you know, uh, that sounds like Attila. And then, I just, I have absolutely zero hope for this band. And I just don't even know how they're even going to stay around if they're going to write god-awful music like this. It's just, it's so predictable and boring and painful to sit through. I'm glad it was only 34 minutes long. Because any longer <laughs> would have been terrible. Would have contemplated drinking bleach. <laughs> You know, I, I, I rather would pick my sack off of my leg than listen to this. Uh, I feel like I didn't say enough about the vocals. Uh, Johnny Plague? It's, it's kind of a goofy name. <laughs> but, um, he, kinda, he does have his own sound when it comes to vocals, but like Tyler said, and like I was thinking earlier... It, they're not very clear and pronunciated. They, it no. sounds more like he does live, at least from the last time I've seen them, which was uh, Thrash and Burn, I think. Or was 2011. it Warped Tour? Warped Tour. Warp Tour. No, it would be this. Yeah, yeah it was Thrash and Burn yeah. 2011. That was the last time I saw them. And at I least didn't think we stayed that long for Yeah, time. well, he came out in a ski mask and then he left. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it, like, he. He sounds more like he does live, and I'll give him some credit for that or whatever, but, I mean, yeah, like Tyler said, the album didn't sound, you know, beefy enough, and I'm sure live, they'll make it sound live, you know, and, um, like I was saying about the Johnny's, the sound of his screams and everything, they do sound like, 
you know, he has his own sort of style. But going off another thing Tyler said, like, I feel about four or five songs into the album, he started not screaming like he did. He sort of, sort of started doing that uh, Jamie Josta thing. What's, what's the guy's name? From mm. the Kingdom of Saga, I think. Uh, Kirk Yeah, Weinstein Kirk Weinstein or, or whatever. Kind of like that-ish. Um, I feel like he's just kind of stopped doing some of his screams like halfway into the album. And I was kind of like, you know, what, what happened to him? Now he's doing a lot more of this and uh, I thought there was like guest vocals or something. But, uh, you know, it's neat that he can do that, but I still feel that it just wasn't enough to save what the album was. I mean, yeah, sure, it's cool that he can do that and everything and you know, but it's just, I, I try not to have the mindset of, you know, this is going to suck, this is going to blow. I try to find certain things that I could say that were nice about this. Like I said, individually, some parts were, you know, if, if you just played that part for someone, and they didn't know it was Winds of Plague, and they would be like, you know, or at least I would be like, oh, that's not bad. But then, you know, just taking into account what the entire song is, where there's, you know, lots of breakdowns, and there's another two-step part just like that, and, you know, it's just not enough to save what the album is, being kind of what they wrote before, and, um, another thing, like Tyler said, I mean, it's not even just about staying relevant, it's just about what, what people like to hear, you know, they don't want to hear the same album over and over again, and it's just kind of, you know, what they've done before, and, um, uh, it just didn't interest me much. Uh, Vincent Bennett was cool. His, like, 10, 15 second part in the album was neat, but, again, uh, yeah, it just wasn't enough to, you know, keep it very interesting to me. Uh, that's just my opinion, though. I mean, people that like Windsor Play, they'll probably like this, you know. It's, they stay true to their roots, but just a little much more than I would have liked. I just... Good. I was just gonna make a dumb comment about I didn't like Bane's new album, so. I mean. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the breakdowns are your ally, Keith. Oh, so you think the breakdown is your ally? Um, I just feel that this band, you know, they came out. They were kind of cool. They had you know solos and some pretty cool symphonic parts, and now they're just trying to fit the mold of what everybody else is doing. And that's just not not cool. I, I just feel that they could have went with what they were doing and made just made it so much better and cooler and like you know you know I just feel like they might like they're relying on their hot keyboarders to like draw people to shows or some shit and, and the keyboards are like so almost non-existent on here you'll hear them during a breakdown and that's about it um they're just kind of nowhere I don't know. But the album's mostly breakdowns, so I mean, it makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> if you like breakdowns, I mean, this is yeah, right up like, your fucking alley. If you wear, like, Nike, and you have a couple windbreakers in the closet, and a few <laughs> snapbacks sitting around, and, uh, you know, you wear shorts with long sleeve shirts, I mean, that if, might, this is all you. If you're a bro, <laughs> if you like bro metal, you this, gauges? Is, this is all you, yeah. yeah and the gauges, that they're, like, you know, that you can you can fly a paper airplane through, then yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to like volumes three times every weekend, it's it's for you. <laughs> what would you give this album? <laughs> I don't know. I just imagine some guy crying during volumes. Um, <laughs> I'd give it like probably a six out of ten. I'm gonna... I mean, it has some parts individually that are, you know. Not as bad as the rest of the album, but, you know, it didn't really stay on par with what I, what I see to be a good album, in my opinion. But you may think otherwise, you know, but I would say 6 out of 10. Uh, I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting started, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10, but I'm going to take one point down for every breakdown, so that's like, <laughs> so now it's like, what, uh, probably like negative 100, but yeah, I'd, uh, I'd say about the same, I mean, I didn't like it. I give it like a, a five or a six with that. I give this a, a three out of ten. That's being generous in my mind. I find this album more comical than actually interesting. Yes. So, uh, if you completely disagree with us, call us a dumbass. I, you know, that's, that's cool with us. Uh, opinion's <clears throat> opinion. So, uh, we'll see you guys around.
Play, uh, One last thing, I feel like all the songs are about like betrayal or something, or <laughs> they're just cursing at someone for doing something that's bad. Exactly. Yeah.